this video, I'm going to show you how to cut a verite dialogue scene. The films you see here are verite documentaries, edited by myself and the panel of editors featured in my book. In this example, we're going to use footage from a scene that I cut for the 2012 documentary Small Farm Rising, directed by Ben Steckschulte. The film shows the everyday rhythms and textures of life on three small farms in upstate New York. One such operation is run by Ian Ater and Lucas Christensen. Got a really good flavor. The first step in cutting any scene is to simply watch the raw footage. In this first stage, one tries to absorb the dynamics of the scene and see what stands out as particularly valuable. The scene we will cut comes from this raw footage here, four clips that add up to about 43 minutes of footage, during which Ian and Lucas discuss a customer who's been squeezing them on the prices they charge for their produce. In the first clip, we see Ian standing in front of a clothesline, talking about the issue. The camera is on him for about seven minutes before it pans over to Lucas. Then they head into their office to punch some numbers into a calculator as they discuss the issue further. In the second clip, Ian takes an order from a customer and talks to the customer while Lucas looks on. In the third clip, he finishes taking the call and they head back outside, continuing the same topic of discussion. In the last clip, we see the clothesline, and then Ian takes another order in the office. Now, let's jump forward a couple hours in the process to where we've identified just two minutes of footage from these 43 minutes that we will use in the first scene. The first clip is from Ian's side, and the second one is from Lucas's. And even though the second clip took place about 15 minutes later than the first, they're still standing in approximately the same places and discussing the same issue. As we go forward here, we're going to be watching the full clip several times so we can really study the footage. This makes for a longer tutorial, but it more closely resembles the real editing process. So pay attention, and hopefully the time you put in will be rewarded. As we watch this first time, let's try to think of what the nut of the issue is. What is essential, and what is superfluous? You'll note that we've bleeped out some of the more colorful language for the sake of our younger audience members. He destroys our bins. He, he practically in them. I saw, I saw one of our bins the sitting like in the kitchen full of garbage, like just like straight up full of garbage. Like paper and loogies and you know, just like. Yeah, yeah. Well, what he, you know, what he's doing is he's doing, he, like, he hooked us with his volumes, he's playing our game, and then he, he's, I, what he's expecting is that when it turns on, we turn all of our prices low. Right. And it's like, I can, I can play the game, but you know what, man, I'd much rather play with field mix. Right. You know, a buck fifty, he can figure out what he, or, you know, but it's like, if he just says, I can't do that, then I say, like, then we can't do it. Right. Uh, it's a real bummer. You know, and it's like, in, you know, it's like now he put in all these big orders and he knows we're planning up. See you later, Sam. Funny dude. Yeah, he's a weird kid. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, and now he's, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. You know, it's like. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying. Yeah, you know. I don't want to lose his business either. Yeah. I, I definitely, you know, I want to sell to him. He's like, he, he was like a, he was a major customer last year, you yeah. know. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's like he's always talking about how, you know, how, you know, how he's all, you know, all for and all behind us. And he's just, now he's trying to. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Right. Even after shrinking this down to a fraction of its total footage, it's still relatively confusing and jumbled because there's some repetition of the issue and there's also some irrelevant details that become distracting. Given all of that, it's important to break our work into two main steps. Step one is to identify and arrange the verbal content of the scene. What will the dialogue consist of and how can we get the ideas to flow in a logical way? In this first step, we won't worry about whether or not something looks good or whether we're creating jump cuts by putting the clips in a particular order. We will leave that visual cleanup process for step two, which is how to make it cut for continuity. In this second step, we will search for cutaways and figure out how to make it feel smooth and professional. 
To move forward with step one, it's often easier to identify material that doesn't work than it is to immediately hone in on the best lines. So let's look at the beginning again and see if there's some stuff we can trim away. Because he destroys our f***ing bins. He, f***ing, he probably f***ed them. I saw, f***ing, I saw one of our bins was sitting like in the kitchen full of garbage. Like just like straight up full of garbage. Like paper and f***ing loogies and f***ing, you know, just like... Yeah, yeah. Well, what he, you know, what he's doing is he's doing, he, like, he hooked us with his volumes. The whole first part basically consists of Lucas complaining and swearing. And while it's colorful, for the scene we want to develop on the topic of prices, it's somewhat beside the point. So let's trim that first part out. This also has the effect of giving us an interesting way to start the scene, which is on Ian engaged in this long pause, lost in thought. Let's play forward from here and see how long he stays on topic before he starts straying off again. Well, what he, you know, what he's doing is he's doing, he, like, he hooked us with his volumes, he's playing our game, and then he, he's, I, what he's expecting is that when it turns on, we turn all of our prices low. Right. And it's like, I can, I can play the game, but you know what, man, I'd much rather play with field mix. Right. You know? It's at this point where things start getting a little confusing. What is field mix? Let's watch further to see if it clears up or not. A buck fifty. He can figure out what he, or, you know, but it's like, if he just says, I can't do that, then I say, like, then we can't do it. And the part at the end is somewhat interesting, but as it turns out, that conversation about their bottom line price is the topic for the next scene, and we don't want to steal its thunder, so we will take it out as well. Let's cut out the whole part starting at field mix all the way to the end. Now, let's see what's going on on Lucas's side. You know, and it's like, and, you know, it's like now he put in all these big orders and he knows we're planning up. See you later, Sam. Funny dude. Yeah, he's a weird kid. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, and now he's, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. The stuff about the weird kid is completely irrelevant. If the kid were a character in the film, it might possibly be useful, but he's not, so let's let that part go. Now let's play it from the beginning again and see whether it's making more sense. Well, what he, you know, what he's doing is he's doing, he, like, he hooked us with his volumes, he's playing our game, and then he, he's, I, what he's expecting is that when it turns on, we turn all of our prices low. Right. And it's like, you know, it's like, and now he's, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. You know, it's like, yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying. Yeah. You I know. don't want to lose his business either. Yeah. I, I definitely, you know, I want to sell to him. He's like, he, he was like a, he was a major customer last year, you yeah. know, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's like he's always talking about how, you know, how, you know, how he's all, you know, all for and all behind us. And he's just, now he's trying to Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. So the scene is starting to come into focus, but it has a couple problems. First, it contains this part where he makes a little slur. Essentially, he's saying this guy is trying to screw us over but he doesn't say it in a way that's flattering to him, so let's take that part out. Secondly, the scene still lacks a good build to the part where Lucas finally says, I don't like it, and steps out of the frame. Ian is talking, then Lucas chimes in before Ian's had a chance to finish his thought. Watch this part again and see if you can see what I'm talking about. What he's expecting is that when it turns on, we turn all of our prices low. Right. And it's like, you know, it's like, and now he's, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. You know, it's like, yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't want to lose his business because. Just as an experiment, let's move Lucas's lines, where he says he's got us by the balls, to the end of the sequence for now. They're great lines, but they don't quite fit here. Now let's watch the whole scene down again. Well, what he, you know, what he's doing is he's doing, he, like, he hooked us with his volumes, he's playing our game, 
And then he, he's, I, what he's expecting is that when it turns on, we turn all of our prices low. Right. And it's like, I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying. Yeah, you I know. don't want to lose his business either. Yeah. Now this really seems to be working. Let's see how it plays as it reaches the end. I, I definitely, you know, I want to sell to him. He's like, he, he was like a, he was a major customer last year, you yeah. know, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's like, he's always talking about how, you know, how, you know, how he's all, you know, all for and all behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're obviously missing something crucial, which is the part that we took out where Lucas in essence says, now he's trying to screw us. But let's look at that extra material that we moved to the end. Maybe that can help us. You know, it's like, and now he's, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. That's the exact same sentiment. Let's try moving it into the space where it's needed and see how it plays. You know, it's like he's always talking about how, you know, how, you know, how he's all, you know, all for and all behind us. You know, it's like, and now he's, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. You don't always get so lucky with little fragments of dialogue, but in this case, it works perfectly. Let's watch the scene down from the beginning one last time. Well, what he, you know, what he's doing is he's doing, he, like, he hooked us with his volumes, he's playing our game, and then he, he's, I, what he's expecting is that when it turns on, we turn all of our prices low. Right. And it's like, I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying. Yeah, you know. I don't want to lose his business either. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, I want to sell to him. He's like, he, he was like a, he was a major customer last year, yeah. you know. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's like he's always talking about how, you know, how, you know, how he's all, you know, all for and all behind us. You know, it's like, <laughs> and now he's, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. The flow of dialogue, while it still may need a bit of trimming for rhythm, basically makes sense and has a strong build to it. And now we have finished the end of step one. Now we can move on to step two, which is making it cut for picture. At some point, it's a good idea to go through your raw footage and scan for sections that might make good cutaway shots. So these markers represent those parts. Now let's identify the problems that need to be solved, one by one we turn all of our prices low. Right. And it's like, I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying. Now, this is not a terrible cut. Cutting to a shock zoom would probably be okay, but the camera work right after that is jittery. And if we could clean this up, that would be great. So what do we need? Essentially, we want to replace this jumpy shot of Lucas listening with a steady shot of Lucas listening. And he can listen all the way from this spot where I'll make a mark in, up to this place where Ian says, you know, yeah, you I know. Don't. So we need to fill this gap. So now we can scan our possible cutaways. Here's one of Ian listening. Another of Ian listening. Here's one of Lucas listening. That seems perfect. He even nods his head in agreement. So let's cut it in and see what it looks like. All of our price is low. Right. And it's like, I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying. Yeah, it's perfect. He's nodding in agreement and it looks great. But by solving this problem, we've created another with this jump cut where we cut from Lucas to Lucas. This is a common occurrence and we shouldn't be worried about it. It's just another problem to solve. Let's see what portion we need to cover. Yeah, you I know, don't want to lose his business either. Yeah, I, I definitely. We need a shot of Ian listening, but there's also that little moment where he's saying, you know. So if we could find a shot where he's saying, you know, on camera, that would be ideal. So now this clip is interesting because Ian says so, and in terms of mouth movement, so is a lot like you know. Let's see if we can match it. Let's find the precise frame where his mouth opens on the source side. Make a mark in, and let's find the you same spot where his mouth opens in the cut. Make a mark in here, edit it in, and pull it back. Abbott has a replace function we could use, but this is okay too. And it's like, I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying. Yeah, you know, I don't want to lose his business either. It works amazing. 
Now let's go forward to our other problem. How you know how he's all you know all for and all behind us. And, you know it's like and now he's you know and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. Yeah, yeah. First, let's trim this a little closer. If you listen carefully, Lucas repeats himself when he says, "You know, it's like he's you know." You know it's like and now he's you know and now he thinks. He's Removing redundancy is something that almost always pays dividends. If we trim this first part out, it could probably be better. You know it's like and now he's. Let's look at the cut. How you know how he's all you know all for and all behind us. You know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. Yeah, yeah. Almost perfect for content. Now for picture, we need Ian listening. And again, we have an issue where Ian says yeah, yeah. So if we can find a shot where his mouth is off camera, or if he says yeah on camera, that would work well. There's, we're getting, we're getting our price from everybody else. You know, and we're moving them. Yeah, we're just not moving them at that quantity. In this cutaway, he starts by saying, yeah. Let's again match the moment where he first opens his mouth in each. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Make the edit. And back it up to the beginning. Now let's take a look. It's like he's always talking about how, you know, how, you know, how he's all, you know, all for and all behind us. You know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Great. We've made it through step two and we can start the fine cutting process. By carefully evaluating the footage and identifying its core components, trimming out superfluous stuff, arranging for content, and then cleaning it up with cutaways, we've developed a finished verite scene. Now, let's look at the final edit of the scene in the finished film, which is followed by two more scenes cut from the same 43 minutes of footage that develop the issue and build it to its logical conclusion. Altogether, it's about two minutes long. Let's watch. Well, what he, you know, what he's doing is he's doing, he, like, he hooked us with his volumes, he's playing our game, and then he, he's, I, what he's expecting is that when it turns on, we turn all of our prices low. I don't want to lose his business because he consistently is buying, Yeah, you know. I don't want to lose his business either. You know, I want to sell to him. He's like, he, he was like a, he was a major customer last year, you yeah. know, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's like he's always talking about how, you know, how, you know, how he's all, you know, all for and all behind us, you know, and now he thinks he's got us by the balls again, nickel and dime us. Yeah. I don't like it. What is our low ball? Because, you know, I got to come to the table with a low ball and say, like, this is as low as we can go. Obviously, he's going to take the low ball, but it's like, you know, a buck fifty gives us, gives us four fifty. You know, whatever. Right. So it's like a buck thirty-five. A buck thirty-five gives us four hundred a pen. A little bit over four hundred and five dollars or something. That seems buck thirty-five. Yeah, I think we can go as low as buck thirty-five. Okay. Hello. Yeah, this is Ian, man. How are you, Water Dog? Do you guys need anything or yeah? Yes, I believe we do have broccoli, Rob. Let me just check really quick. Yeah, let me hold on. Let me just take a peek. Hold on. Nicole wants twenty-four. Yeah, more. Oh yeah, yeah, we got that, man. Yep. Um, do you need any romaine this week? We're asking a buck thirty-five. So they're they're gigantic though. <laughs> this has been a video tutorial from my book, Documentary Editing, Principles and Practice. For more specific concepts and examples, pick up a copy of the book.